What I've got for you today is 10 different drum libraries, all from Ugratone, including one that's not out quite yet. I will have a review of that on release day, but uh, you can get a little sneak preview here. So we're going to be doing them all back to back, isolated, no real mixing, just some little tweaks. And then we can do a little tier list because uh, you guys like tier lists, right? I don't know. Kind of wanted to do this for a little while just to shoot them out back to back, see kind of how they compare to each other just side by side. So I was kind of just doing this for myself, but I thought, hey, let's make a video out of it so you can see it too. Now this mix, if you will, is just isolated drums. It's just the stereo output of the plugin. And what I've done with each one is turn off the humanize function because I've already got that baked into my MIDI. I've turned off any one shots and I've done a little bit of tweaking of the levels where necessary just to make them sound as good as possible in a few minutes. There's no other plugins involved, it's all totally raw. They're not gonna sound as good as they possibly could if I was gonna actually mix them, but you get a sense of the strengths and weaknesses of each drum library and which ones sound really good out of the box and which ones maybe need a little more help after the fact. So let's roll the comparison and on the other side, I'm gonna rank them. As of yet, we found no better way to compare similar things than a tier list. Starting out with Cult Drums 1, this is one of the early ones. I actually really like the background graphic on this. It was updated along with Riot Drums when the full Ugratone Drums plugin came out a while ago. So this one got a facelift and I think it looks really good. Sound wise, it's not my favorite. I want to like it. There are some things I like about it. Uh, my main problem with this one is the toms have this kind of big built-in reverb and there's nothing you can really do to change that. It's just the way they sound. Maybe the samples themselves were processed, but there's nothing you can do in the mix to make them less reverby. And I think the reverb sounds a little fake. So the toms are my problem with this one. It's otherwise pretty decent D tier. This tier list thing, 
It's just for fun. Some of them have to come out last. It doesn't mean they're terrible. This is all relative to each other. Uh, these are my opinions. Disclaimer done. Ah, Riot Drums won. This one has a special place in my heart because I used it on my smash hit COVID Core 2020 Songs to Quarantine Yourself To. On that record, it was just the stereo output. I didn't really do any serious mixing with it because I think I made that EP in like less than a week. Just uh, staying at home, I really didn't care if the drums sounded that good or not because it was supposed to be kind of just a little punk thing. I uh, didn't want the drums to sound too good. But anyways, I used Riot Drums 1 on that. I thought it was a, a great fit, and I didn't really have to do a whole lot of tweaking for it. So I like it. It's also been updated and remixed um, a year or two ago now. And so it sounds better than it used to, and the plugin looks good. So, uh, I'm going to give this C tier. Punk and Grind. I haven't really used this one very much. Really, this demo, mixing it a little bit is kind of the most experience I have with it. I haven't done any songs with this one. Um, it's kind of interesting. Ron actually made the shells out of cardboard tubes, these quick tubes, which I think are for like concrete footings. But um, you can see a little clip here. It's a pretty fun idea, but naturally you might be worried that cardboard tubes might not sound very good. Actually, I don't have a problem with the shells on this. I think they sound pretty decent, especially for what they are. My problem with this one is the cymbals. The cymbals, I think, sound kind of cheap and harsh and just uh, not not my taste, uh, but it, it, it does say punk and grind. So if you want something pretty raw and aggressive, especially with the cymbals, yeah, it does that. And the cardboard tubes... They're kind of fun. Uh, graphics on this one, one of the ugliest, I think, background. Just not a huge fan of it. The multicolored wraps on the drum shell look kind of cool, but it looks kind of disco. And it's not actually what the drum kit looks like. Should have done cardboard tubes for that one. So overall, I'm going to give this one E tier. Riot Drums 2. Uh, I haven't played with this one much either. Again, outside of this demo, I was just kind of testing it out for the first time. I really like it so far. There's lots of fun snares in this one with a lot of ringy character, but uh, they sound good. They sound pretty interesting. So I like this one. Otherwise, the whole drum shells kit, everything sounds good. The samples are done in a little better quality than I thought Riot Drums 1 was. So I like this one. I'll probably use it in the song at some point. So I'm going to give this one B tier. OSDM. I uh, like this one a lot sound wise. I think it's uh, very dry. It's got some small toms, I think, smaller shelled toms, which are a little small sounding compared to some of the others. But I like the kicks and the snares overall. Very dry. Cymbals sound good. I like the vibe of this one. I like the sound overall. So sound is good. Uh, graphics, background is probably the ugliest of all of them. I like the sound a lot though. So this one's going in B tier. Tight studio drums. I really like this one a lot. I think it was a big step up from some of these other ones in terms of sampling quality. Uh, now I haven't tried all of them. I don't have Colt drums too. Um, I haven't tried out the Doom ones, but this one was the first one I tried that I thought this sounds really good, really professional. It's a nice sounding kit. It, it is tight. It is not the biggest. It's a little drier, I think. Cool sound. I did a video on it. You can go check out the video if you want to hear more. And Tight Studios going in A tier. Speed Metal. Mm. So this one, I can't complain because I think I bought it for $5. Um, I have never really used it much. I've tried it out a few times, and every time I don't really like it. And this test was the same. I spent a little more time with it. There's like four kicks in this one, but I just didn't really like any of them. I think the samples are a little rougher around the edges in terms of some of the sampling consistency. And I just wasn't a big fan of the kit. The backdrop is okay. Doesn't really speak to me. Uh, this one's going in F tier. It was my least favorite. Drums Against Humanity. I also did a video on this one. I liked it a lot. 
It's a collaboration with Inferno from Behemoth. It's really good. It's got his drum kit on it. Um, what more do I need to say? It's got five chinas. It sounds really good. It's mix ready for metal stuff pretty much out of the box. Uh, with a little tweaking, you can make it sound really killer. It's a fun one. Yeah, I, I really like it a lot. Check out my full review on that. But that's going in S tier. Lastly, we've got the Total Studio Drums, which I also did a review on recently. This is the latest one that's out. I really like this one a lot. It's a tough choice between this and Drums Against Humanity as for which one I like the best. The Total Studio Drums are a little more well-rounded for more genres, but Drums Against Humanity is more mix-ready for metal out of the box and has some more kit pieces. It's got a lot more chinas and a lot of, a lot of fun drums. So... The Drums Against Humanity is a little bigger kit, a little more metal, maybe a lot more metal. Total Studio Drums still sounds great on a metal song, and it's just uh, not quite as big of a kit, but I really like the sound a lot. It's very well recorded, so tough call here. They're both really good. Total Studio is getting S tier as well. So that's my rankings of these. Now, I'm not going to rank faster and louder because it's not officially released. I don't know if anything will change, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to play with it. So one thing I noticed while playing around with the presets is the newer ones don't really have any one-shots used on the stock presets, or at least not most of the presets, which I think is a good thing because one-shots are not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be kind of a band-aid for a drum that doesn't sound great, which is why I also turned them off in this comparison. I also just don't really like one shots. I don't like them when I'm playing, they feel unnatural, and I don't really like them when I'm mixing. Personal taste thing, but I think they're better without it. And if your drums sound good, you shouldn't need them. So they're kind of a crutch. What I can say about Faster and Louder, which is coming early May, is that I like it and it's cool. And it's maybe a little more vintage, a little more raw than some of the other newer offerings, but it's quite nice and worth checking out. So I should have a review of that ready for release day. So you can check it out then and check out my big drum programming guide I just put out the other day. It's an hour long. It's super in depth. And this is just something easy because I can't film a video like that every week. Subscribe if you aren't, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Go check out my other videos that are probably better than this.